Nietzsche famously said, uh, he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. Now that's an interesting comment in my opinion. Um, can be looked at in so many different ways, but um, right now I'm, I'd like to juxtapose why versus how in terms of any motivation for ever doing anything. First we, if we're going to do something, presumably we have a reason. Anything. Anything that's volitional. Um, any sort of initiative that we're going to take. Even in a purely hard deterministic universe, if you assume that at least we want things, um, even if all of our wants are determined, whatever, we still want things. That's the why. We want is why. Why do we want? <laughs> uh, and I guess science and technology are the how, or even things like logic, reason, all this kind of thing. You need these two, the why and the how, to act together, if you ask me, to form a coherent um, view of what humans are. We are rational and we are non-rational. Because if, we if we were purely rational, uh, then we would be really great at the hows and not so great at the whys. Uh, if we were purely irrational, it would, it would all be why and no hows. <clears throat> so we need, I wouldn't even say a balance, I would say a synthesis of the two. Um, that's why reason and science and logic and all this sort of thing, all these hows require a why or, an, uh, or perhaps a series of whys to kind of provide the fuel to motivate the engine, which is the how. The car will get you to the destination, but the, but sitting in the car and going to the destination are not an end in themselves. Getting to the destination and being at the destination is the end. Um, or I suppose, if you were to merge the why and the how, you would have something along the lines of an automobile enthusiast. The how and the why are merged. He wants to work on his car because A, he likes working on his car, and B, he likes driving it around, and C, he likes to be in the places that his car takes him. So it's a wonderful sort of juxtaposition of why and how, yin yang. Some people even, I'm, and I'm somewhat sympathetic to this, reduce the fundamental principles of the genders this way. Males are how, females are why don't want to argue that because that's getting into things like feminism which don't really interest me all that much but you know it, it it's a wonderful sort of couple of poles why versus how that you can use to sort of look at things look at you know epistemology look at motivation look at why anyone ever does anything um, why should you get out of bed in the morning why bother even existing um, to me I think the, some of the problems that we're dealing with in this postmodern world come from, I suppose, too many whys and too many hows that kind of spun off in different directions and aren't really related to each other anymore. Um, and a lot of these threads, a lot of these lines of thinking don't even consider motivation or don't even consider say the how of it for example I'm sympathetic in a kind of dilettantish sort of idealistic sort of way although I'm not an idealist in the philosophy or the political philosophy of anarcho-syndicalism um, look it up if you're interested a lot of people just consider it so much rubbish but I, I like the idea now <clears throat> Why we would want to put that into place is, you know, okay, there's any number of reasons. The how of it confounds the why of it. Because try and put anarcho-syndicalism into place in our civilization and watch all the obstacles you run into. Um, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't want these sorts of things, or it doesn't mean that how and why are automatically at odds with each other just means that you have to make sure that the two are sort of working in conjunction with each other. That the why and the how are not in conflict. They are in harmony 
or in synthesis even, I, I would say. I think most people sort of have that balance worked out or that sort of yin and yang thing worked out in their own way without really needing to uh, consciously uh, come up with that way of describing it. Uh, they, they, it's just sort of how they operate without having to think about it. But it's just, you know, once you've opened the Pandora's box of asking yourself why or what's going on or what is the universe or whatever, you often have to revisit the most basic assumptions that you, that you had. That can be terrifying. But if you, if you persevere, if you become aware, and if you follow your train of reasoning or your train of thinking or intuiting or whatever, um, and if you have, I would say, goalposts or anchors or whatever. Um, again, I've mentioned mine. Mine is the cogito. That's my epistemology. Or, that's where it begins. <clears throat> if you have this, you needn't be worried about being at sea. Um, of being stuck in existential uncertainty forever. Um, but you will still have to sort of re-examine everything. You have to rebuild the wheel, as it were. Um, and I think that why and how are really useful starting points in terms of figuring out the very basic tools of your whatever philosophical system you're putting into place. <laughs>